Hello there, Vinyl community. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I'm somewhat adjusting this. Normally, I film these videos at night. Right now, it's morning. I've been very busy with work, so um, I always try to film a video whenever I could squeeze one in. So uh, right now happens to be the perfect time. I got a lot of finds to show you. I got some online stuff. I got some record store stuff, and I got a lot of thrift store stuff. Like, this is a mega thrift store haul. A lot of this is thrift store stuff. So, um, I'm going to start with my online stuff first. I'm very overdue on getting this, but I generally wait till stuff gets, like, cheaper for me to get it. Um, so, like, you know, it can take a few months, and then, it, you know, it goes on sale, and then you find it on Discogs or eBay, you're like, oh, I, I could add that to the collection. This is the Doors London Fog Box set. This is, uh... This is the earliest known concert footage. Not footage, but, uh, you know, earliest known concert of The Doors. This was May of 66. And uh, the way this is packaged is absolutely phenomenal. Um, you know, I'm just going to go through all this real quick. I uh, keep the bubble wrap and everything inside. This was the hype sticker. I didn't pay how much it says on the sticker. I got it at a discount, brand new. Um, this is the CD. It's packaged really nicely. This wouldn't have been able to be done without uh, Nettie Pina, who was one of the Doors uh, classmates at UCLA that uh, was invited by, I think, Jim to come and record the show because they're very excited for it. And uh, this, uh, this is the recording after all these years. Comes with a replica postcard. The Doors at London Fog comes with a re replica coaster. Like, <laughs> they really want you to have the full London Vogue experience when you get this. And something I think is really cool. It comes with a bunch of 8x10s of the band and stuff. Um, I'm going to show them one by one. This is a, a band photo. These are very glossy and nice. And it says on the back, The Doors, um, London Vogue 66. You got Jim. Let me get that back. Uh, John Densmore. One of my favorite drummers of all time. Big influence on me. We have another man that influenced my life. This man was the first time I can, I can remember actually crying when a celebrity died, you know? Because this man, even though I was like 11 or 12 when he died, this dude still has a huge influence on me. Ray Manzarek. Um, late, great Ray Manzarek. This guy is absolutely phenomenal. Did, a, did so much for the doors. It's absolutely crazy. Another man, I, I remember was a huge influence, you know? Robbie Krieger. Excellent guitarist, and uh, comes with a replica crumbled up set list done by uh, John Densmore. Comes with a uh, replica of the uh, poster um, that Nettie Pina did. Uh, I think it was uh, the music was done by the Doors in it, and that it was sourced from this. I'm not sure though. Comes with this very nice write up. Three pages, you know, just talking about the uh, project. And it comes with the 10 inch vinyl. Which housed in a brown paper sleeve and then an A poly lined one. They make it look like an acetate. Really cool. Absolutely love the packaging on this. And if you guys haven't got it, it's really cheap right now. Um, I really recommend going for it. I got mine for like 30 bucks. So. Uh, brand new sealed $30 box that you really can't beat that. So up next, I have something that I was actually kind of disappointed in. And that's not something you're going to hear me say a lot, because I'm generally not very critical on things. But this album reissue is absolutely atrocious. atrocious. The sound quality, I left a really scathing review of it online, I'm not going to lie. Um, the sound quality on it is absolutely top-notch, but the packaging is just unforgivable. It is... First done by Comus. Okay, this is the music on vinyl pressing. You may see that I have this in sideways because it comes in this resealable sleeve rather than shrink wrap. And literally within the first, I'd say, two minutes of me handling it, this side was already ripped. I think it came already ripped from the factory. So I'm like, I'm tired of undoing this because it's already I'm becoming sticky. So I just slit this whole side just to make it, you know, an actual sleeve I can use like this. Um, like I said, sound quality on it is good. Um, they try to replicate the label. But uh, the packaging is where they really... I don't think my camera is going to be able to capture the justice on this. The colors are very washed out, very pixelated. Um, you might be able to catch it on the back with the actual lettering if you compare it to the original. Very blurry. And if you think this is bad, wait till you see the gatefold. The gatefold is completely pixelated to the point of almost no recognition. 
It is, it is like they redrew this in Microsoft Paint. Or if you look at the original, it is not blurry or pixelated. The original was done in the 70s when this album was put out. So the fact that like, especially the thing that's most noticeable is that little yellow stem right there. It is completely pixelated. And I was absolutely shocked the first time I opened this. I'm like, how, do, how are they going to do this to an album, a classic album? You know, it really doesn't deserve that. And the insert, rather than making it white and pink, they made it like a white and red. It, it's going to look pink on the camera. But it's like a red, very dark red. Very disappointed in that as well. Normally not very critical on things, but like... The fact that they don't shrink wrap it, the fact that, you know, they replicate the artwork very, very poorly. Very poorly. You know. The sound quality, I guess, makes up for it just a little bit, because the, the record sounds phenomenal. It's a dead quiet pressing, and I guess that is what most people focus on, but at the same time, I want a nicely packaged album rather than just sound quality, you know? You could have the best sounding record in the world and have the worst cover, and I don't mind, but if you're just doing a reissue or something like this, you know, at least, <laughs> at least try. That's the way I see it, and in my opinion, I don't really think they tried when they made this reissue of that classic album. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be looking for another pressing. Uh, this is the last online one before I go into record stuff. I've been wanting this for a while. It's just that original copies are very, very slightly expensive. I shouldn't say expensive. They're like 30 bucks, but I don't feel like paying that for it. So I found this 80s reissue of this album. And uh, no gatefold, barcode, you know, typical 80s release. But still some, uh, fantastic soundtrack, fantastic sound quality. This, the soundtrack to Fritz the Cat, this was $12 shipped to me. Um, in the shrink. Uh, movie's kind of funny. You know, very very political. Very politically influenced. Um, but the soundtrack, if you love psychedelic music, was done by Ed Bogus. And Ed Bogus was a gentleman that formed a group uh, called the United States of America. The one that recorded the one-off album with Columbia Records. And uh, after they broke up, he was commissioned to do the soundtrack. So a lot of this stuff is him. You know, there's a lot of absolutely stellar tracks on here like Winston, House Rock, Duke's Theme. It's just absolutely a uh, phenomenal soundtrack. And if you don't have it, I really recommend adding this to your soundtrack collection. Also an interesting movie. So if you guys feel like it, check it out. But I'm pretty sure a lot of people are aware of its existence. Um, this is the first record store find and like... <laughs> This really set the mood for the store because I think this was the first thing I grabbed. This is a UK first pressing of Cream Wheels of Fire. No foil cover, just a, like a matte cover. It's an original on Polydor. And I don't even have a US copy of this, to be honest. Uh, it's just every US copy I've seen, which, oddly enough, I've only ever come across one original US pressing of this album. Uh, it, it only had the um, live disc in it. It didn't have the studio disc and like... I think this album, I think the studio disc. The, the, the live disc, I really, you know, don't mind too much. But, um, I always listen to the studio stuff, you know. Um, Press Rat and Warthog, uh, White Room, um, you know, that, that sort of stuff. I, I forgot the entire track listing on this album on post. But, um, you know, I was just really stoked to add this, you know, especially an original UK copy. So, I grabbed it. It was at a good price, you know. Hoping I could get some more of the uh, original UK cream stuff, because all I got is the US stuff, which I can't complain with that, because now I have a complete cream discography. Um, this is another one that I needed uh, for my collection. This was, uh, it's in Partial Shrink, and I absolutely love this album. This is the Beach Boys Smiley Smile, you know, infamous Smile Sessions stuff. Some of this stuff was sourced from the Smile Sessions, and I really recommend checking it out. Absolutely great album. Uh, there, there, some of the highlights on here, of course, Heroes and Villains, Vegetable, She's Going Bald, Little Pad. Just listen to this whole album. Do yourself a favor. This is a beautiful Near Mint disc on Brother Records. Um, you know, just an absolutely stellar album. I really recommend it. And I, I, I don't have to mention it. It's in partial shrink. Um, shrink's coming off on some of it, as you can see. But I really don't mind, because it was a very good price. And it's an absolutely stellar album I've been needing. It didn't sell that well. Uh, the only Beach Boys albums I need now are 2020 and Friends to complete my 60s stuff. I already have all their 70s stuff besides Love You, which every time I've seen that, it's just overpriced. Um, I got this Sgt. Pepper picture disc. 
Um, it was, you know, reduced in price and no gatefold or anything. It's just a single jacket like this. And uh, sound quality on it's pretty good for a picture disc. Um, yeah, it's just pretty much like a reissue of the one that came out in 78, I suppose you could compare it to. Uh, has the exact same artwork and stuff for this, but it's just using it's just a uh, source from uh, Giles Martin's uh, 2017 remaster, which I absolutely love. There's a lot of songs that really shine in that mix. So, uh, you know, most of the time when I listen to it, I'm gonna be uh, doing the 2LP version, but you know, occasionally I'm gonna throw this on, you know, and uh, enjoy it. Oh, there we go. This is one that I've been looking for an original of literally forever. Not literally forever, but for a very long time I've been looking for an original of this. And every time I see it, it's a bootleg. You don't see the originals too often. And I found this original very cheap. Uh, this is Here the Beatles Tell All. Mono. No stereo banner, so it's an original copy. Nice spine. Has the nice replications of all the stuff I'll never find, like this and this. Uh... Get this, original VJ inner sleeve as well. Very crumpled up though, very crumpled. Um, disc on it's pretty nice. Original VJ, you know. If you can find any original VJ stuff of the Beatles, get it. You know, it's very, very significant. It was, this was, oh, this was pretty much to combat, uh, hear the, um, hear the, not hear the Beatles doll, the Beatles story on Capitol. Um, haven't listened to that one yet, but I have a bootleg picture disc of it. This was in the, like, they have a $4 bin at uh, the store I go to. It's like 3 for 10 or $4 each. And I only found two there. This is a UK first pressing of the Buddy Holly story in mono. Uh, this came out like 1959, 1960. This was all just like demos and stuff that was overdubbed. I, I need the original Buddy Holly story. It has the original in her sleeve. And the disc on it's pretty nice. It's an original UK coral pressing. Almost a perfect flip. Look at that. Almost a perfect flip. It's very exciting. I love perfect flip. When uh, you flip it and label either perfectly up and down or left and right. So yeah, really nice one to add to the collection. Also a very tight jacket for the inner sleeve it has. And this is the last of the record store stuff before I go on the, the thrift store stuff. This is actually the first Sly Stone album I have. I only have the singles. I, I don't see their albums often. Sly and the Family Stones, Greatest Hits. Yeah, this was also in that uh, 3 for 10, but, you know, I only found two there. Um, it has, like, these little things by the former owner Cruz, or Cruz, or whatever. But the disc on it's beautiful, and the cover has no seam splits. Very minor wear besides that, so I figured I'd pull the trigger on it. You know, it's it was cheap, so why not? You know, I need some Sly Stone in the collection. So going on to thrift store stuff, um, I have quite the haul of thrift store stuff, you know, big, big thrift store haul that I got. Um, uh, these first three came from a separate thrift store. I've owned many copies of this album right here, but this is my final upgrade. This is, uh, this is the Moody Blues, unless I can get one in the shrink, which it's a gatefold, so I don't really think I'm going to be finding it in the shrink. Um, two records set, original threshold label. Yeah, it's two records, but I'm only going to show that one for the sake of time. But yeah, stellar, stellar compilation album. Got this one as well. This is an upgrade for me because this one's in the shrink wrap. This is a Columbia compilation, Heavy Sounds. This is all uh, Heavy Sounds. Check out some artists on there. Big Brother and the Holding Company, Blood, Sweat, Tears, Electric Flag. It's Beautiful Day, Johnny Winter, The Birds, Chicago... Mike Bloomfield and Al Cooper. I'm sorry if I sound a little bit stuffed up or whatnot. I'm just coming over the flu right now. I had it uh, pretty bad this year, so I really recommend not getting the flu. I had it uh, very high temperature flu to the point to where it made me hallucinate because my body was didn't know how to react with it. And it temporarily gave me synthesia. And if you don't know what that was, I was able to smell the color white. And that's a very obscure claim, <laughs> but like... I'm being serious with you guys. Don't get the flu this year. It is really, really bad. Please stay safe. Um, this is one I was actually really glad to find at the thrift store. Near mint condition. Beautiful copy. Columbia Record Club copy. One I didn't have. Stevie Wonder, Inner Vision. has been looking for it. 
uh, now for my classic Stevie albums, I just need a Musical Aquarium. And um, how did I forget what the other one was called? Uh, Fulfilling This First Finale. I have that one on 8-track, though, so I'm not missing out too much. But still, beautiful minty copy of Inner Visions, you know? You, you don't have to ask me twice to pick up this um, 10 cents at a thrift store. Pardon me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> anyway, let's get back on the video and move on. Inner Visions, absolutely stellar one. This is a uh, UK alternative stuff from the uh, 80s. Um, this was also, you know, thrift store. Uh, this is the House Martins London O'Hull 4. Of course, it has Happy Hour on it. What else is on here? Flag Day, Sitting on a Fence. Yeah, House Martins. Uh, original Electra pressing from the 80s. If you dig UK alts with a slight indie sort of twist to it, I'll surprise the this at the thrift store. Uh, very much reminiscent to if you combine Squeeze with uh, maybe R.E.M. Not bad at all. I don't know why this is here. I got this in the thrift store, and I think I just lied to you. I think this was the third one of the three. Let me look inside. It has a sticker. This was the third one of the three for ten. So this was... I did get three for the three for ten. This was the last one. This was Hank Mobley and Cedar Walton Breakthrough. Um, yeah. Finding this for four dollars or three for ten, pretty stellar in my opinion. To find any Hank Mobley and Cedar Walton stuff, you know, you have Sam Jones, Billy Higgins, and Charles Davis on here as well. Um, haven't listened to it yet, but I'm very excited to. This is on Cobblestone, subsidiary of Buddha Records, and uh, absolutely love Hank Mobley. His first album, notoriously one of the rarest jazz records that you can pick up on Blue Note. Original, really nice copies go for thousands of dollars, like a thousand or two. So. Anytime I can find his stuff, pretty cheap, I will grab it. This was a thrift store one that actually sort of surprised me. Uh, this one wasn't from my normal thrift store. This one was like uh, 59 cents. But still, finding solo stuff from this person. I don't have anything by this person. Uh, Sandy Denny. This is like an old-fashioned waltz. I lied. I actually have Zeppelin 4. And Sandy Denny was in Fairport Convention, and then she sang on Battle of Evermore on Led Zeppelin 4. That rhymes. And... Uh, yeah, that's her voice that you're hearing on there. Uh, this is an original U.S. Island pressing with the original inner sleeve. Just minty disc. Absolutely love the Island label as well. You know, really minty disc. Looks like it was almost unplayed. It has Solo on here. You know, uh, I really recommend checking it out. She has a wonderful voice. Wonderful player as well. Sandy Denny. This one, normally I don't pick up records unless they have a cover. And I know that's a really awful way to start this off because you're thinking, oh, you bought just the disc. But this Just the Disc album is pretty hard to find. Um, very early rock and... Well, not very early, but early rock and roll. Um, you know, I picked it up even though it doesn't have the cover. Obviously, I'm going to upgrade it at some point. But I really just wanted a filler copy because I really enjoy this album. Run Around Sue by Dion. Just the Disc. Just the Disc. And I looked around... I, I re-looked the shelves twice trying to find the cover. Didn't find it. But still, 10 cents. You know, normally when I see this album with the cover, it's like 40, 50 bucks... And frankly, I don't feel like spending that on a Dion album. So, you know, uh, I'm on a budget. I, I have it in this little thing, to be honest. It's a uh, RCA Camden, just cheap little Mantivani release. I just put it in here. Catalog number and stuff. Um, some of these I haven't gotten around to cleaning. Like I said, I've been busy. So from this pile forward, hasn't been cleaned. Uh, this is Jane the American's Greatest Hits. Um, I had a copy of this, but it was warped, and it was a reissue. This is an original with the capital style inner sleeve, and I had no idea United Artists had a sleeve like this, because when I saw this in the store, it was like this. So I only just saw, like, the entertainment, and I thought it was that uh, early, like, 60s capital sleeve. I'm like, oh, it's the wrong sleeve. I take it out. It's United Artists. It's the correct sleeve. I was like, no way. Uh, original United Artists, Jane the American's Greatest Hits. Original inner sleeve as well. So when I get around to cleaning this, I'm definitely going to be spinning it. I got a 12-inch single right here, which I normally don't pick those up either. But this is a promo-only 12-inch single. Not a promo-only, but it was a, uh, it is a promo of Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Praying, backed with, your love is taking me on a journey. I don't really have a lot of Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, so pick it up whenever I can. This looks exceptionally clean, and it's promotional. So why not? Um, man, this one is pretty beat. Discs on it are nice, but cover's pretty beat. I need to do a serious cover repair on this. This is uh, James Gang's 16 Greatest Hits. 
very worn, seam split central, you know, everything that you hope to find with these old records. Two records set, I'm only going to show one again for the interest of time, ABC, and it has the original inner sleeves as well. It even has the original little cardboard insert that it came with to separate the two records. Very flimsy cardboard insert. <laughs> so yeah, James Gang. Um, I don't know why I got this one. It's actually really beat. Um, I guess I was just looking for stuff at the time. This is Jan and Dean Take Linda Surfing. Normally I don't pick up this common sort of stuff unless it's pretty clean. As you can see, there's some wear on it. Uh, it has the original livery sleeve, but someone felt the urge to cut corners at the factory. No. <laughs> But someone was definitely cutting corners in their life. Um, this con it actually isn't too bad. Maybe I could upgrade the cover because the disc is a solid um, lower end VG plus, maybe higher end VG. So yeah, maybe I could find a nice cover with a uh, with a you know crappy disc and uh, do a good old Frankenstein on it. Yeah, Jan and Dean take Linda surfing. The song Linda was actually written about Linda McCartney, so. That's your fact of the day. This is uh, Diana Ross and the Temptations and the Supremes. This is uh, everything you'd ever want Motown. The Temptations and the Supremes, Diana Ross. Uh, original Motown pressing. Disc on it's pretty nice. Still needs a cleaning, like I said. I haven't gotten around to cleaning some of these. But as you can see, the disc is only dirty. There's no wear to it. So why not? You know, 10 cents. You know, Diana Ross, Temptations, Supremes. In pretty solid shape, just needs a little bit of cleaning to it. Pick it up. This is one I've never had before, and I see it all the time. Literally all the time, I see this album. And, <laughs> you know, it's just uh, always like, you know, I never picked it up, but why not? It was cheap. Reach the Beach, The Fix. This has uh, one thing leads to another. What else does it have on there? Saved by Zero. I think that's all I know off of here. But yeah, The Fix. Original on her sleeve, reach the beach. The disc on it is pretty worn. Side one is like VG minus, side two is VG plus. You can tell which side was preferred. Um, let me grab these last bit together. This is uh, Jumpin' with Jonah, Jonah Jones Quartet. You know, 10 cents, might as well, you know, I can always upgrade it. And since it's really cheap, I, I, do, I kind of put that in consideration, like, hey, it's really cheap, I don't want to just leave it here. Original capital pressing, dirty, but I need to clean it, you know. Solid VG on that, should sound good. This one kind of annoyed me, because someone put a little sticker right here. This is muted jazz, and whenever you go to peel the sticker, as you can see and expect, no matter whatever you try to get it from, it takes off the cover with it. So I'm going to have to deal with it for right now until I upgrade it. Muted jazz, Jump Jones. Both have the original capital inner sleeves, so that's kind of what helped me to get it. I was like, you know, they have the original inners, they just need a good cleaning. You know, the cover doesn't really matter much as long as the music inside is sufficient, very good. And Jonah Jones, you can't go wrong with that. Um, I was surprised to find this. I should have placed this earlier in the video. Um, this is Percy Sledge, When a Man Loves a Woman, at the thrift store. You, you know, I only have the single for this. Uh... Has some tearing up here. I really don't mind, though. Ten cents, you know. Sa save it from rotting at the thrift store, you know. Give it a good home. And this one is exceptionally dirty. <laughs> wow, that is, a uh, that's filthy. Um, yeah, just needs a cleaning. I'm probably going to finish cleaning them after the video. I just wanted to get a video out today, you know, just to show you guys. You know, I, you know, I, I've been trying to upload recently whenever I'm not busy, have a day off, you know, have an off day. Uh, I used to have this one as well, but this was an up this one's an upgrade. Feet Don't Fail Me Now, Little Feet, infamously quoted by Dream Page as his favorite band. Um, uh, has Bonnie Raitt and Emmylou Harris doing backing vocals. Um, um, who else is on here? Lil George. But yeah, uh, has the original inner sleeve, disc on it's real nice. And when I had this, I remember very slightly enjoying it, and I uh, either gave it to a friend or sold it, because all my records before... Because now I just get my doubles, give them to friends. Um, I used to sell them off, so... I don't know I don't know where half that stuff went. This is Earl Granite Basin Street. It was cheap. It looks like someone put it in a binder. Uh, yeah, really cheap. 
original on DECA. This gun, it's real nice. Why not? I definitely need to get it a new inner. These are fresh thrift store state, as you see them. And here's the last one. It's one of my favorite jazz pianists right here. This is uh, another fresh thrift store state one. This is Errol Gardner Paris Impressions. I could definitely upgrade this one. It has some writing up here. But the disc on it is beautiful. Let me take this out. It's a uh, 6 eye Columbia. Really nice, heavy disc. Barely looks played. So I, I'd grab it. You know, like I said, I can always find a nicer cover or whatnot. And then Frankenstein it. Or if I find it, just find another pop, you know, give it to a friend, you know. Show me Errol Gardner is. Great jazz pianist. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I always appreciate... Whenever I see people comment on my videos or like them, I just surpassed my 200 subscriber mark, and I'm planning a contest. So stay tuned for that. Thank you to all my subscribers who just keep watching my videos with their support, with their comments, with them, you know, just even commenting, hey, how are you doing? You know, I really appreciate it, and I really want to give back to my subscribers. Planning a contest. Don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'm definitely doing a contest. So uh, stay tuned for that. And as always, thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful day. Peace and love. Peace and love.